Welcome back everyone and in this episode we're going to take a look at Vue CLI 3 and before we jump uh, jump into it I want to make a note just a closing note on the, the episodes before this if you have watched them basically don't worry too much about Webpack uh, the main key points that I want you to take away from this that you just know what it's being used for you don't need to know how to configure it because most of the time Frameworks will do that heavy lifting for you, and that's what Vue CLI 3 does. So you don't, you, hopefully you will never have to write another line of Webpack config in your life. And if you do, if you do need to accomplish some tasks that Webpack, Webpack config helps you accomplish, uh, you will basically know what to look for and more or less how to implement it and how it works. I'm going to close my... Uh, VS Code here, and, uh, and this is a link to Vue CLI 3. And just a quick point, I wanted to take your uh, take your attention to this uh, line here. And th basically, it says that the CLI service is built on top of Webpack and Webpack Dev Server. So this is the only reason that I chose to actually uh, explain how Webpack and Webpack Dev Server work. So you have some prior knowledge to how view cli3 works under the hood so you're you, you know at the end you might know how to write a component but then you will be have that little scratch at the back of your head like I don't know, how does it all work so th that's the kind of feeling i didn't want for you so uh i'll leave a link for this description in the description you can read through this document if you want uh it explains some stuff and uh how you how to use view cli3 but this is what this tutorial is about so let's close this and I have a folder here where I'm going to create a new view project. So here I have my uh, command prompt op opened at this directory here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first type in npm install. So I for install global at view slash CLI. So what this is going to do is it's going to install Vue CLI 3 globally on my computer. So it doesn't matter which directory I'm in, I'm going to be able to use the Vue CLI. Okay, so once it's installed, let's go ahead and clear our screen here. And let's type in Vue. All right, so if you type in Vue and you get this menu, you're more or less done. And um, Vue CLI is installed on your computer. Not too hard. Now. Vue CLI 3 has a bunch of commands. Uh, at the moment, we're just going to be looking at create and later on serve, but focus on create now. Right? So, again, let's clear and let's type in view create and the th th argument that we have to, or rather, even a parameter that we have to pass is the name of our application that we want to create. So, new app. Okay. Let's type in enter. And now it's going to prompt uh, us for some stuff. Uh, you can go for default and skip this talk that I'm going to do about what the features are. And uh, But if you want to stick around and listen, you're more than welcome to. So Babel, it's basically your compatibility with the old browsers. So uh, new features like promises and some JavaScript functions like uh, flat map uh, and are basically they don't work in old browsers and uh, Babel is basically what provides that compatibility so it translate translates your codes and creates these functions to be able to work in older browsers okay so TypeScript is strongly typed JavaScript it's a super side of JavaScript so basically what it means if you know how you have a variable and you can assign a string or a number to it and you can never really know if your variable is a string or a number unless you can do like type off and then you will know. And strings and numbers behave differently. Well, in TypeScript, you will have to uh, set the type of your variables. So you will know for sure if it's a number or a string or an object, etc. Okay, TypeScript is a big topic, so we're not gonna opt in for that. Progressive web apps, uh, big buzz at the moment. It basically feels and looks like a native application but it's really just a browser. Uh, sorry, it's really just a website. Again, this is not what this tutorial is about, so we're not going to pick that. View Router. Essentially, what we're going to building, be building is a single page application, and uh, 
our single page application can have multiple pages and we might want to navigate from page to page. So view router will provide us with uh, the routing configuration and uh, display that route in the browser address. Okay, we're not gonna opt in for that now, we're gonna add that later. So Vuex. I really love Vuex. It's a state management system. And what that means is basically you have one box in the center of your application and that box contains all the information about your application, right? All the important information. Uh, all the important information is not contained in one component and then you have to pass it into the second and third component. No, it contains in this one box and you can grab it from any component and and anywhere in your app from this box, okay? So CSS preprocessor, if you watched the previous tutorials, you know what it is, basically just CSS and steroids. And yes, I wanna opt in for CSS preprocessor. I'm gonna press space to select that. Linter and formatter, that's basically your error checking and making sure you're not writing some gunk, okay? Uh, so unit testing, so this is how you test if your components or your functions work. So you write some tests and uh, um, if they pass, you know your code works. And E2E testing and to end testing, uh, basically what's going to happen if you run an E2E test, it's going to spin up your application, it's going to execute some uh, actions on your site, so it might fill out a form and it might submit it and then it's gonna wait for a response and, it's, and you can double check if that response is what you expect it to be. So this, uh, these tests can mimic user behavior. So they actually launch, your, spin up your application, launch it, and uh, perform, you can perform user interactions. Uh, both testings I'm gonna leave blank because they're quite advanced topics on their own. So let's press enter here. I'm gonna opt in for stylus. You can choose any CSS, pro, CSS preprocessor that you want. Uh, and here I'm just gonna go for ESLint and Prettier. So ESLint basically just gonna be error checking and Prettier is gonna make my code look pretty. So enter and lint on save. So I wanted to format my code when I save the file, okay? Uh, basically, do I wanna store my configuration in individual files or do I want it all in my package.json? I don't like when there's too many files in my solution. So I'm gonna go for package.json. Store all the configuration in there. And I don't wanna save this template, thank you. So after our application is created, let's go ahead and CD into our app. CD new app. All right, and in here, I wanna type in code dot, or alternatively, you can open up this folder in any editor that you want. You can use Notepad++ if you're a rebel. Uh, basically, Pick your poison. So mine's VS Code. So I'm going to go down quite, um, quite comfortably. Okay, whatever this is, close it. I'm going to close this um, command prompt. And now let's uh, take a look at the folder structure. Hopefully, if you watch my previous tutorials, this is not going to look too foreign to you. These are your node modules. So all these packages made make this application work your source folder this is your javascript application so you have your main js and this is what mounts your application so again if you watch my previous tutorials you already know what this does and how it works and in your public folder you have your index.html and this is where your application is mounted to all right so you have the git ignore file, which is basically uh, stuff related to git, uh, which is uh, source control. And basically, if you don't know what git does, don't worry about it. It's not gonna impact your development environment in any, in any way. Babel config, this is just configuration for Babel, <laughs> nothing in there. So uh, really don't worry about this Babel config anyway. Package lock.json, this is something if, uh, related to node modules. So once you do npm build um, or npm install, it will generate this file. And it's basically like a map for your package.json. So if you look in there, you're gonna be like, what? 
So don't even look in there. Doesn't matter what's in there, really. Sometimes if something breaks, you delete it and stuff starts to work. So, okay, so let's take a look at our package.json and really uh, the main part that we want to look at is the scripts part. So this is, if you remember in my previous tutorial, this is essentially how we're going to be uh, running our application. So scripts serve is how we're going to serve it up. Build is basically a production build. Okay, and lint. Uh, never run it, don't know what it does. Lint probably checks your code or something. I'll delete it because... Okay, and now we have two dependencies. So the only thing that we're going to be using after we build is Vue and uh, CoreJS. So CoreJS is part of Babel and this is basically your functions that are going to help old, br old browser run new JavaScript features. And here are development dependencies. So again, Babel is just old browser compatibility. ESLint, uh, drop it down to, this is basically gonna help me help my code look pretty. All right, stylus and stylus loader. If you watch previous tutorials, again, you know what this is. This just helps me load my styles, view template compiler. Again, if you watched previous tutorials, you already know that this is gonna help us load these components and build them into JavaScript files. And uh, again, Babel, ESLint, and uh, CLI service, this is what's going to help us run our application. So if you look here, view CLI service, view CLI service, right? So this is what's going to serve our application. This is essentially your Webpack dev server. Okay. So let's close this. Enough ramble. Let's actually run our one of our scripts. So npm run serve. So again, in package.json serves right here. So this is going to execute this command here. So npm run serve. I'm going to prepare my browser. Let's open this up. And voila, here is our application. Not much to it. Just make sure your it works. If you have any errors or problems, um, drop them down in the comments. I'll try to help you get set up. But at this point, all you need to make sure is that it runs and it works and it builds. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like this introduction, like, subscribe, because this tutorial is going to be awesome. If you have any questions, leave a comment. As always, see you in the next episode.